Yes, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Alejandro López. I'm a staff scientist at Los Alamos National Lab. Lab. Um, thank you all for listening to this talk. Um, uh, the topic of my presentation is going to be um, magnetic monopoles in uh, cubic lattices, um, particularly the way we can implement them and how they can uh, move around in a cubic lattice due to the uh, application of uh, quantum fluctuations uh, with a transverse field. So all the details can be found in this um, uh, publication and publication. So first thing, most important, which is the, um, the team. So uh, this has been done with uh, collaboration with uh, D-Wave. Uh, in D-Wave, we have uh, Andrew King, to whom all the uh, credits must go. He did most of the experiments. He is director of performance of the company. And he collaborates with uh, Gabriel Boulin-Lamar. He took care of a uh, fine tuning of the, of the chip. Also, uh, Danny Dahl, he's now at Gold Quanta, but he contributed with the uh, embedding and the design of the embedding of, uh, in, the lat in the lattice. Here at Los Alamos, um, we counted on the experience and all the insight that Cristiano Nisoli has on SPNI systems. Uh, for him, also a lot of credits. And um, finally, myself. Maybe you are wondering what is all this about D-Wave, but um, spins, uh, eyes, uh, monopoles, they are not supposed to exist. But uh, so, so what, what is all this about? So to start with something, something everybody knows, uh, which is water, Linus Pauling, uh, some years ago, <laughs> ago uh, provide, provided an, estima an estimation of the amount of disorder in uh, water ice. He provided um, um, an estima estimate of the residual entropy. that happens when, when we have, we have uh, oxygen, oxygen atoms in, atoms in some, some fixed, uh, fixed position, <laughs> positions in a crystal lattice, and then protons of hydrogen atoms are, atoms are cycling around. The, the oxygen and the oxygens. And he realized that realized that that when we have the tetrahedron and two atoms are pointing in and two other atoms of two other oxygen um, you know, water molecules are molecules are pointing out pointing out of the of the tetrahedron <laughs> uh, we have a sort of a, a enhanced order in the in a lower energy in the in the water ice. So these um to in to out scheme was used by Philip, Philip Anderson years later, later to exp explain how spins can arrange in a pyrochlor lattice. He anticipated these materials and um, expected to find an icing model materials with uh, spins pointing either out or in of this uh, similar tetrahedron. <laughs> Projecting this, this scheme of 3D into the two-dimensional plane, we observe that atoms, atoms are in the vertices and spins are either pointing into the center of the square or pointing out. This is the most stable configuration uh, we can have uh, regarding spins oriented uh, with respect to each other. So um, fast forward, a physicist um, uh, thought that a good way, a good way to test all these theory, <laughs> theory, theories was to um, by building these uh, lithographically patterned uh, arrange, arrangements of nanomagnets. So if we can take um, materials which are magnetic and we create these protections, protections we see we see in the in the right image. We can have we can have uh, horizontal and vertical lines that can be shifted one with respect to the other, and then create uh, different couplings. This is artificial spin ice. So we have ice, we have spins. Now it's artificial, artificial because it's is uh, is made by by uh, uh, experimental teams. Um, this this is a way to control um, geometric frustration and 
uh, and explore a lot of fascinating phenomena. So we have not only frustration, frustration, frustration we have also, also, also phase, phase transitions, we have uh, the um, dynamics of the spins moving, moving in a given way uh, under external physical stimuli. And we can also, also, also study, study magnetic monopoles and monopoles. But if we want to study these in real materials, we have to construct the materials. We have to detect a monopole. A monopole. And that's what experimental teams did in 2009. <laughs> Uh, in this paper by uh, by John Morris, uh, they um, they observe uh, real monopoles. So monopoles um, here I base um, what are they? I mean because we have the experience of magnets, and when we break a magnet in two, in two, we don't have one monopole and then another monopole north and south. What we have is uh, two magnets because space. And magnetism rearranges, rearranges to have two spins with one north-south and south and north and south monopole. Well, in materials, uh, this is not much different, but there is some slight differences. For example, we have this system of tetrahedron, and we have arrows, spins pointing in or out the tetrahedron. If we take one spin and flip it, the neighboring cell these two into our rules are, are also broken. So what we have is, in one case, three arrows pointing out and one in. In the neighboring cell, we have three arrows pointing in and one is out. So we have an effective dipole. Experimentally, you can uh, create monopoles by applying a field. So both uh, north and south monopoles now split and travel away from each other. That's what we can see in this right image. <laughs> image where the line joining, joining those, those monopoles, is, monopoles is a string called Dirac string. It was predicted, predicted by Dirac in the 30s. Uh, it was experimentally observed in these materials. So are they monopoles, authentic, authentic monopoles? Well, they are pseudo particles that resembles like monopoles, but they are still joined by these chains. Can we go to lower, um, um, uh, uh, to more controlled uh, system systems? Can we look at all these, all these in a quantum manner? Well, that's, uh, that brings us to uh, the famous keynote by Richard Feynman, when he, sa when he said, well, if you want to study something quantum, um, you want to study the, the quantum nature of, uh, of a system, well, you, you better try to reproduce it with quantum mechanics. And um, that's basically what we wanted to do with D-Wave. We have these macroscopic uh, qubit, <laughs> qubits, which are um, uh, reactive to a transfer field, and uh, we can quantum mechanically put the system into a superposition of states. So we are dealing with a pseudo-classical system, but it's still driven by quantum fluctuations. And using the D-Wave 2000 Q lattice, uh, we were able to simulate the physics of spins that we find in actual materials, but in a well-controlled manner in a qubit lattice. So the goal is to put all these uh, Q, um, uh, ice rules and uh, physics, physics of um, uh, uh, spin ices in a quantum lattice, okay? So this, this is not entirely new. <laughs> new, it's, uh, this form of work by, uh, uh, by uh, D-Wave uh, uh, in collaboration with other people uh, gave very good results. For example, Harris, published in Science, uh, science um, 3D spin glasses, spin, spin glasses, where disorder spins were, uh, 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 were uh, implemented, implemented and ground states were uh, identify, identified. Also, Andrew King uh, and collaborators worked on order by disorder, order by disorder uh, uh, in a costly thoughtless, thoughtless um, uh, transitions in programmable uh, lattices. 
More recently, uh, our colleagues in Oak Ridge National Lab and U uh, University of Tennessee, they, they, they were able to obs observe transitions, phase transitions in the SAS tree suffered and lattice. Now we follow the same, same spirit to uh, create uh, these uh, um, monopoles in cubic lattice. And furthermore, we want to observe how the monopoles can travel and wander in the cubic lattice in a very, very controlled manner, defining all the parameters in the system. So first thing is to define the model. We have arrows uh, sitting in a square, and we have several arrange arrangements for those, uh, those uh, uh, arrows. So we can ha have, have for the spin eyes of two in, two out, that uh, two, two arrows can be pointing in, two arrows can be pointing out. And this is the so-called uh, type one, when this is in a horizontal or vertical. When two in and two out are, are um, uh, perpendicularly, we have a type two verte uh, uh, vertex. Okay, this is this give us give us the lowest energy energy, and what type one is lower in energy than type two, or vice versa, depending on the type of uh, capping we impose to the arrows. So we can distinguish uh, J perpendicular if the coupling is between two perpendicular arrows, uh, sorry, parallel arrows, or two pa uh, J parallel, per parallel arrows or perpendicular when they are perpendicularly arranged like that. So we can have also higher, higher energy um, configuration, <laughs> configurations, and this is the case of monopoles. So a monopole is when we have three arrows pointing in and only one out, as I showed in the, in the previous slide for the materials, or all the arrows can be pointing in. So of type one, we have two. You just have to turn 90 degrees the, um, the, system, <laughs> the system to have the two configurations. Type two, you flip or you turn four times and you have the four configurations, similarly for type three and for type four. So if we repeat this pattern on pattern on a, on a big square, we can create this cubic lattice. So all every every um, uh, la, every every vertex vertex can be on can be on type one or type two, or we can have in the whole lattice a, um, a mixing of all of them. We can have also a monopole, a monopole as uh, uh, shown in display for this uh, yellow, yellow, yellow lattice uh, sphere, sphere. So uh, red corresponds to one in the qubit lattice, blue corresponds to a minus one in the qubit lattice. And we have to smartly uh, uh, embed all these uh, in D-wave lattice. And this is done with, um, with um, with an embedding in which in which in the camera layout we impose or we fix four spins four uh, qubits as a one spin. So in the yellow scheme in the yellow circles in the scheme on the right hand, we can see we can see that four four qubits qubits are joined joined by strong ferromagnetic couplings and. Each of, each of them, one, two, three, and four, corresponding to one of the arrows, are connected by either J perpendicular or J parallel values for the uh, couplings. So we need to um, uh, create um, um, a, schedule, a schedule because the Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian is given by, given by, a, by, a, by a quantum fluctuations dominated by one Hamiltonian. Um, Ising Hamiltonian is, corresponds to the classical one. It's given by another Hamiltonian. And as much one decreases, the other one increases. So that's what we have to define with either a forward annealing or a reverse annealing. Uh, we chose to create a classical state with a, for, a forward annealing. And that will be the initial state from which we will start a series, a series of cycles to go from classical to quantum, from quantum to classical, and observe by each time, each time the, um, the, 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 
the classical configuration, the solution of the, of the, of the system. So we have three different cases. We have uh, the generate ice, 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 ice with when, when both type of uh, couplings, couplings are, the same, <laughs> are the same. We have when one is slightly larger than the other one or the opposite. And what we observe is that um, um, when we have the generate uh, ice, ice, both type one and type two, type two are the are equally probable. We observe we observe um, uh, for a stronger coupling, so we can have we can have um, uh, predominantly uh, thermal thermo, thermo fluctuations. So thermal fluctuations when the coupling between between the spins between spins are weak, or we can have quantum fluctuations predominantly uh, with respect to thermal when couplings are very strong. So in the regime of weak coupling, we have that basic, basically type one, type one and type two are low uh, least frequent, frequent that type three. As we increase the coupling between spins, so quantum fluctuations uh, um, uh, have more importance they evolve, evolve, and no monopoles um, are, obser are observed. So if we look at the case two, when one type of vertex, vertex is predominant with respect to the other one, other one we, get, we, we get in the, in the structure factor, those pinch points, and um, an evolution of the curve that tell us that the stronger the, stronger the, uh, the coupling the 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 longer the the, um, the longer the uh, the um, correlation length for the system pointing out to us uh, to a, a, a higher higher order so if we look at the dynamics of the monopoles the monopoles we can pinch one we can pin one um, monopole at the at the boundary and we fix we fix the flux in the in the inner uh, part of the part of the lat <laughs> of the lattice. What we do is to create an odd number of monop monopoles in the uh, inside, and driven by quantum fluctuations, we put the system to evolve. What we see is that one of the monopoles moves to another position within the lattice. Uh, similarly, uh, the two other monopoles evolve, but one annihilates the other monopole. And this is done from one observation of the lattice to one cycle of the annealing into another uh, solution of the, of the system. So when we keep annealing the system with an, an additional, um, additional annealing cycle, <laughs> cycle we, we take the system to, system to a superposition, superposition of a state, of state, of state, of state, of state, and it partially loses memory when it um, when it when it's taken back to the to the classical state. When we what we observe is that observe is that the, the monopole followed uh, a path and it goes to another position position position. <laughs> if we keep annealing and annealing the the the, uh, the lattice the, the, the lattice the monopole keeps moving on and on to different positions. So um, with that, I'm running out of time, uh, just to mention that, that uh, we can have monopole, monopole entropic interactions, uh, defining the ordering of the, of the, of the monopoles in the, lati in, the lati in the lattice, even though the interaction between monopoles is restricted to only first neighbor interac interactions. Um, Finally, conclusions. Uh, conclusions simply that we uh, we've been we've been using a quantum annealer annealer to as, as a surrogate platform to study uh, spin ice. We can create monopoles mon uh, monopoles and um, drive some uh, dynamics uh, thanks to the quantum fluctuations imposed by the transfer field. And we observe that monopoles can interact even though they are far away from each other thanks to the uh, entropic screening. And uh, thank you for listening to my presentation. I appreciate your interest on our work. Thank you.